If we don't get what we want, I will shut down the government. Okay. I am proud to shut down the government for border security. The dumbest thing about the longest government shutdown in American history is how it started. For weeks, Trump asked for a budget that included $5 billion for a border wall. If we got $5 billion, we could do a tremendous chunk of wall. But Senate Republicans realized they weren't gonna get Democrats to agree to that. So on December 19th, they passed a bill to keep the government funded until February without a wall. Republicans will continue to fulfill our duty to govern. It looked like everyone was going to enjoy a nice holiday break in a functioning democratic system. And then, Trump turned on the TV. I'm troubled by what's going on. I feel like the Republicans have caved in again. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This was a cave. Not funding the wall is gonna go down as one, one of time. the worst things to have happened to this Game. administration. Trump will just have been a joke presidency that scammed the American people. To end this Congress without a shutdown, Trump gets nothing and the Democrats get everything. After two days of being attacked by Fox News, Trump told Republicans he would not sign the bill to keep the government funded. The president informed us that he will not sign the bill that came up from the Senate last evening. The president has gotten word to me that he is either getting funding for the border or he's shutting the whole thing down. And so began the longest government shutdown in American history. 800,000 federal workers no longer getting a paycheck. Shutdown could be making your food less safe. Consequences will soon be felt in all sectors of the economy. The whole thing was a disaster for Trump. His approval ratings took a major hit. A plurality of Americans blamed him for the crisis. And he didn't get the all he wanted. Well, after 35 days, Trump changed his tune, agreeing to reopen the government for three weeks. And while this might seem like another product of Trump's Fox News obsession, the truth is it's part of a bigger pattern of right-wing media pressuring Republicans into government shutdowns that blow up in their faces. President Trump was attacked by the hard right and fearful he backed off his commitment to sign this bill. It's a dangerous cycle that helps explain how government shutdowns are transforming from a rare crisis into just the new normal. Shutdown's over, but don't worry, in all likelihood, we will have another one. Could there be a round two? President Trump not ruling out another government shutdown. Before there was President Trump, before there was even Fox News, there was Newt Gingrich. Yeah! In 1995, he became the Republican Speaker of the House, writing a wave of anti-Clinton sentiment and promising to get government spending under control. The American people voted for a smaller government for less bureaucracy. Gingrich had become Speaker thanks to a group of popular right-wing radio hosts. People like Rush Limbaugh and Oliver North, who had mobilized Republican voters by fear-mongering about the size of the government. It's nice to be with all of you extremists tonight. That became an issue when it was time to fund the government. Republicans wanted a budget that made dramatic cuts to things like Medicare, but Clinton promised to veto it. So Gingrich had a choice to make. Come up with a compromise and risk betraying the talk radio host who help you get in power, or refuse to budge, shut down the government, and hope Clinton caves. The pressure from the right was intense. One radio host told the New York Times, this is the chance that we've been waiting for for years. I'll be disappointed if Republicans in Congress cave, and I think our listeners will be too. North agreed, saying if Republican leaders back down now, they'll be swept out in 96 right along with Bill Clinton. Do you think Newt will uh, moderate his stance now that he's the Speaker of the House? And I said, better not. <laughs> so Gingrich chose to gamble, shutting down the government for the longest it had ever been shut down in American history. Gingrich believed that with the help of right-wing radio, public pressure would turn against Clinton and he'd have to cave. One of the reasons I believe in the end we'll win, we now have a media giant who stands astride the entire society. <clears throat> But Gingrich miscalculated. Rush Limbaugh was powerful, but not that powerful. Gingrich was hammered as a crybaby throwing a tantrum. Stories of the impact of the shutdown dominated the news cycle, and Clinton became more popular while people turned against the GOP. We Eventually, Gingrich was forced to back down. Republicans agreed to a compromise budget, and Clinton sailed into re-election the next year. That shutdown was a disaster for the party. But that pattern? It was just getting started. In 2013, there is another budget fight. If standing for liberty makes you a wacko bird, then count me a proud wacko bird. Republicans, led by Ted Cruz, want to defund Obamacare, something they just don't have the votes to do. But now, they're not just being egged on by Limbaugh and some radio hosts. There's a whole army of right-wing talking heads, and their demand is clear. Republicans right now, if they want to repeal health care, they've got to shut the government down. There are talks about a government shutdown. If the Republican Party does want to get in the game and push back, that would be where. We might get blamed for a shutdown. So what? It's the right thing to do. Some of these radio talk show hosts have real influence. Many members of Congress 
Congress. They are worried about a primary challenge that could deny them the nomination. So Republicans shut down the government again. The government of the United States of America has shut down. This time, they're trying to avoid another Gingrich backlash. There's round-the-clock messaging about how the shutdown is no big deal. We've gone through now 15 hours of a government shutdown. I don't think anybody's feeling any great pain here. Not just no big deal, it's actually good the government is shut down. That's a dream for a conservative, when non-essential federal employees are not being paid with my tax dollars. Maybe we need to shut it down every couple of years under this administration. Think where the economy would be. These people are Nuts. Gingrich is now in on it too. He's gone from being a politician to just another right-wing pundit. This is not a crisis. A shut government down. shutdown isn't a crisis, Mr. No. Speaker. Can't believe I'm rooting for Piers Morgan in that exchange. My advice to the Republicans, hold the line. This will boomerang if you hold tight. It's still not enough. The 2013 shutdown ends much in the same way as Gingrich's did. Republicans are forced to cave, Obamacare survives, and most people blame the GOP for the crisis. We fought the good fight, we just didn't win. But now on Fox, they're allotted for standing up for their principles. The shutdown was so magnificent, run beautifully. I'm so proud of these Republicans. Ted Cruz was doing exactly what he was elected to do. And a few years later, when it's time to fight about the border wall, the cycle starts again. He has to hold firm on this. Shutdown is exactly what we need. I think the president should dig in his heels. Let's fight and get all we can. He can't reward Schumer and Pelosi by signing this bill. What you're seeing is a party that's been backed into a corner. Ever since the 90s, Republicans have become dependent on outlets like Fox News and Rush Limbaugh to rally their core supporters. If they betray their echo chambers, they could lose their seats. I'm done with the Republicans if they don't fight here. I will not support, I will not endorse anybody that doesn't have the courage to stand up on this issue. But these two groups have radically different goals. Governing requires compromise to get things done and keep the government functioning. Punditry requires conflict big, simple, ideological fights that get audiences fired up so they keep tuning in. Shutdowns are the clearest example of that kind of conflict. Our side good, their side bad, build that wall. Shut the government down. Everybody says, oh, that'll be terrible. Terrible thing is to let the Democrats bully this president who was elected by the people of this nation. So the Republican Party keeps getting steered into crises it knows it can't win. This was the longest shutdown we've ever had. But on the right, the reaction was it didn't go far enough. He just reversed himself. That's a victory for Nancy Pelosi. He promised something for 18 months and he lied about it. One of the few voices trying to dial it back was, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, Newt freaking Gingrich. He should not pay any attention to Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter has never run for office. She's off here in some fantasy land. She has to be noisy, which helps her sell books. Oh my God. I mean, he's right, but it's not just Coulter. They're all trying to sell books. Newt Gingrich was on Fox News a week before, cheering on the shutdown while trying to sell his book. Now author, best-selling book, Trump's America, The Truth About Our Nation's Great Comeback. The president's position ought to be that we're not going to kick the can any further down the road. Right-wing commentators have no incentive to compromise. The more Republicans embrace shutdowns as a political tactic, the more right-wing media will come to expect and demand it from them. Donald Trump can win this. He hangs on and continues down this road. At some point, there's going to be a shift. And you can hear it in the way Trump supporters defended his decision to reopen the government. For uh, all the pundits who said over the weekend, uh, Trump came. That's a little early, isn't it? Because this is not done. But this game isn't over. This is halftime of the Super Bowl. The pattern is already restarting. This war is not over. The battle may be over, but the war, it never really ends. This president lives to fight another day.